Hiya, it's Mr. Baker here, and today we're going to be looking at gears. Okay, so we're going to be looking at gears today, and we're going to be trying to answer this question, how do my bike's gears work? So, what are gears then? So, rotating wheels with teeth or cogs that interlock with another wheel. They are used to transmit and often multiply turning forces or moments, so they act in a way similar to levers. They can be called, sort of called force multipliers sometimes. Where might you find gears? Pretty much anything that moves. So in cars, in the gearbox and in other places. Bikes, usually attached to the chain. In children's toys perhaps. And in watches and clocks and things like that. So how do gears work? So there's a turning force which you apply to one of the wheels. And those wheels interlock and it turns the adjacent wheel but in the opposite direction and then the cogs prevent the wheels from slipping so they have those little teeth so that they don't slip between them so it's basically just transmitting a force from one wheel to the next wheel and as I said what we can do with these is we can use them to multiply a force so a wheel with more teeth the teeth must be the same size and the same distance apart so they can lock in, turns slower. And here the bigger wheel turns at half the speed, but the moment of the turning force will be, what do you reckon? So you can see that, that the little one, the 12 toothed one, is moving around twice as fast as the 24 toothed one. So what do you think the moment will be? So yes, here the moment's gonna be twice as big since the radius is twice the size. So this is how we can work out the, the moments. The, we use a ratio, basically. So the ratio of the moments also equals the ratio of the number of teeth, because they've got to lock into each other, and that also equals the ratio of the radii. You could also look at the ratio of the diameters or the ratio of the circumference. That would All, all of those would work. And that would tell us how much um, the difference in moments would be from one wheel to the next. So have a look at this one. The bigger wheel, what do you think? How different do you think the movement between the small wheel and the larger wheel is going to be? So we've got 12 teeth to 36 teeth. So it's going to be a third of the speed of the smaller wheel, but the moment of the turning force in the larger one will be three times the size of the smaller wheel. Um, again, because we're looking at the ratio, so 36 divided by 12 is 3, isn't it? Okay, let's have another look at this one then. So we've got a bit of a question here. The larger wheel has a radius of 30 centimetres and has a moment of 120 newton metres applied. What's the moment about the 20 centimetre wheel? Okay, so remember that the ratio of the moments equals the ratio of the radii. So if we've got the ratio of the moments, we can go from 20 to 30 um, because that's going to be the ratio of the radii. So that's going to be the small um, wheels moments over the large wheels moments. And so we have another way of writing that would be 20 over 30 equals m over 120. So that's, we're just looking at the ratios again. So that would be 20 times 120 all divided by 30. So the moment would be 80 newton meters. Okay, so the moment about the 20 centimeter wheel would be 80. Right, maybe you would like to just pause the video there, see if you can have a go at this one. So the moment about a two centimeter wheel is six newton meters. What's the moment about the 10 centimeter one? Okay, do you want to pause it there? And then I'll go through it with you in a second. Okay, have you paused it? Okay, let's have a look then. Okay, I'm gonna go through the answer now. So, we look at the ratios. We look at the ratios of the radius, 10 over two equals the moment of the large one divided by the moment of the small one. So 10 over two equals m over six, the moment over six. So 10 times six divided by two equals the moment. So the moment is 30 Newton meters. 
Okay, so what we've done then, the moment of the two centimeter wheel was six newton meters. And so what we've done is we have um, used this as kind of a force multiplier. So the way you can put a small force in on that small wheel and we get a large force out. So this might help um, if you've got to lift a heavy load, you've got to put more force in, you would have a small wheel to a large wheel and you would be able to lift something hard, harder than you would be able to lift something that's heavier or you might be able to um, force something that you wouldn't be able to force um, with the strength that you could put in. So that was gears and this is the question we asked, how do my uh, bike's gears work? Well, so if we've got a bike like this, so you, you would have some different cogs that you would pedal around. So this is where the pedals would be and you would be forcing around on this one. And then this wheel over here would be attached to the back wheel of the bike. So if you were getting started, um, then you, or you were maybe going up a hill, then you would put this one on the smallest wheel it could, um, and this on the largest wheel it could, and then what you would be doing is you would be multiplying the force that you were putting in onto the back wheel. So that might mean that you were going up a hard hill and you needed to, um, with the force, you couldn't, you couldn't um, get up there very easily. So you'd have a, the smallest wheel here and the largest wheel there, and you'd be multiplying the force um, so you'd be able to get up the hill easier. So that's how um, it might work if you're trying to go up a hill. Let's say you were trying to go really fast so you've got a bit of speed going so you might have something like this where you've got a really large wheel that you're pedaling round and so that's going to make this little wheel move really really fast round so every time this goes round once this will have moved round a number of times depending on the ratio of the two wheels the two the radius of the two wheels and so this is when you might want to be going faster so this would be harder to do you'd have to put more force in here um, but you'd be making your wheel go around more and more times for every time you were pushing around once and so it makes you go faster. Okay so a couple of examples of how gears work on a bike um, and an overall look at what gears are. Okay I've been Mr Baker and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.